Oh, wow. Oh! Oh! Hey guys, Cal Torek here. And I am level 32. I'm starting to get the stockades farm down. I'm still live streaming right now, so it's why it's going to be a little bit different from my normal videos. You're going to just have me and my mic open the entire time, and I might talk to chat a couple times while I'm doing this, but... Um, I think I've got the stockades farmed down pretty well. I'm getting anywhere from 10 to 12k XP per clear. Uh, it just depends on how many mobs spawn. It's some RNG involved that I'll explain when we get there. But yeah, we're going to get started. I am no longer using swiftness potions. I'm able to do the entire run without them, though they do help a lot. I do also have world buff, so you may need swiftness pots if you are using or aren't using world buff, but I am using world buff. Like the Nova there, and then blink afterwards. And I'm spamming mana shield the entire time. You don't have to worry about your mana. You could also cast Living Flame on one of the mobs and have Beacon pre up, just to get you some static healing to live through the uh, the Shadow Word Pain damage. And essentially, you just want to get to this point here before you die, and you want to be in front of the caster mobs ideally. Um. And then you just wait up on this ledge until the mobs reset. Now we need those mobs to reset too, and then we can kill these two groups. Now these mobs are very important. As you can see here, oh, we need these. Okay, so now we're going to swap over here, let the guy reset. So these, I want to talk about these haunting phantasms really quick. They're the most important mob in here because you need to pre-clear these. And the thing is... You can have two spawn, you can have seven spawn. My last reset, I had seven of these spawn, and I had to pre-clear five of them. You could have two spawn, and they're in spots that you don't have to pre-clear, and you can just instantly come in and do a big pull. I'll explain why you pre-clear them in a second, though. So let's go ahead and get this group done. Um, we are pre-clearing this because... Um, for the explaining. So we're just going to get these mobs dead real quick. We're going to drink up the full. So, these mobs spawn these little illusionary phantasms. They're not a big deal to deal with. Any direct damage to them, whether it's from a single target spell or an AoE spell, instantly kills them. The problem is, when they're in the clumped up of a group of mobs, they're casting the summon spell. So, they're always just getting desynced out of the clump, and it led to a couple of my early deaths. So, you want to pre-clear as many of these if you can, like... I probably don't need to pre-clear this guy, but I'm going to just because I need I, I want the space to play with. There's another one over there. You're going to see me looking at all of the ones that are in the main aggro path, and I'm going to do my best to pre-clear them. So you see spawn the Phantasm. It says it has 4k HP, but any direct damage kills it. So as you can see there, the Kona Cold killed it off instantly. I like to swap the Arcing Blast for killing these guys, by the way. The single target DPS is just super nice. Um, and then we're going to clear another Phantasm. I got a Phantasm tar or targeting macro. There's another one there. We don't have to pre-clear that one. It's not in the middle of our kite path. We will mark it so I don't aggro it. There's another one there. We probably don't have to pre-clear that one, but my worry would be one of the mobs dragging into it and aggroing it. We might not have to pre-clear that one, though. This one, oh my god, look how many Phantasms we're getting. So these two have to be pre-cleared. We run up the middle here. They will 100% aggro. And don't worry, I've been able to do all of my pre-clearing and still clear in fit less than 15 minutes to avoid lockout. So um, it doesn't slow you down too much. Ooh. Hello, boys. I would have rather you guys stayed alive for the uh, kill phase, but that's fine. Don't accidentally die here. Okay. I'm actually going to be using my uh, dumplings here so I can get this done a little bit quicker for y'all. So yeah, the phantasms, you have to be keep your eye out for them. You want to. So we're actually going to pre-clear star so we can aggro that guy there. We don't have to pre-clear diamond, though. We're going to get triangle. We're actually going to get star first. Let's get star right now. 
I see another phantasm there. We don't have to clear that one, I think. So we should be fine there. If you want to kill them, though, for the XP, because I think I'm going to be hitting lockout soon anyway, so there's almost no reason not to pre-clear them all, just for the XP. And as you can see, just any direct damage just one-shots those guys. The adds are really a non-issue as long as you just hit them with any spell. Okay. See if there's any more nearby phantasms that are a big problem. That guy's not a problem. But this guy will 100% be a problem. He's like right in our kite path. And there's another one up there too. That one's going to be a pain in the ass to get, I think. We'll see. I might be able to get that one. Look how many phantasms we got. So, And that's, that's just the really frustrating part about this farm is... There's just a lot of RNG. There's a lot of RNG in how many of these guys spawn and where they spawn. Like, if they're all along the kite path, guess what? You have to just deal with them all. I'm going to go ahead and Living Flame since I'm getting room. I'm going to drink up anyway. Okay. So we need that. Oh, that yeah, that is a Phantasm. So we need to get that guy. We're going to mark them just so we don't actually... Ooh, we got the rare spawn. I have not pulled him yet, so I don't know what he does. So those are the two big phantasms we've got to avoid, and we have to kill that one. He's in an awkward spot, though. Oh, there's another one there. We don't have to pull that one, though. How many phantasms did we get? Okay. I don't want to aggro those guys. We're just going to go through the back, I think, is the safest way to do this. So we are going to pull this guy. We want the XP anyway, since we're going to hit lockout. The one pull is super fast with the living flame trick I've learned. It's a really easy kill phase once you've got this map clear. It's just the, this is the most annoying spot is just clearing this out. Get living flame down. Kill the avatar. Living flame damage does not kill the phantasms, by the way. So you have to cast Kona Cold or rank one arcane explosions. If you're wanting to save mana, rank one arcane explosion probably the play. I just Kona Cold because it also hits the phantasm I'm trying to kill. Okay. Unfortunately, I think we might have to clear that group. But we're going to try and get this guy without clearing any extra mobs. Because I want to do as big as a pull for you guys as possible. Let's see here. I think I can get this guy without aggroing anything. We just need to make sure he doesn't path into any mobs. Perfect. Okay. So let's get this last Phantasm down. And then we should be able to do the pull. And I'm going to try and do it without Swiftness Pots. I like using Swiftness Pots personally. I might do it with Swiftness Pot. We'll see. I like doing Swiftness Pots because it makes it easier to grab all the mobs. So if you're going purely for XP, per I don't know if I should pull this guy. Do you guys think... I'm going to save him for the end and just kill him solo because I don't know what abilities he does. I'm not going to pull him in the big group. But I will kill him at the end of this video. All right, so we're about to do the big pull. So now I swap back to Living Bomb. Living Bomb's still super nice. It's not a good portion of your damage. Honestly, you could probably not use Living Bomb. I use it just because it does help a bit, but a majority of your damage is Blizzard and Living Flame. All right, so let's not screw this up. Okay. Okay, so I did die in that pull. I did a big goof, but... Um... I'll show you the guys the real pull now. So we're going to put Beacon up first. And then we are going to get as many of these mobs as we can. So I want to get this guy. Okay, let's get the... Definitely want those mobs. Obviously. 
and those mobs. Living flame, ice block. Okay, so now they're all going to get stacked into the living flame. And before that ice block sends, you do not want to jump out of the ice block. Just cancel your ice block and blink forward. Perfect, just like that. And as you can see, I'm already getting a lot of kills. That's because all of those mobs got stacked inside that living flame. That's why you want a living flame before ice blocking, because that's how you're going to maximize living flame damage. And now you just juggle. You want to cast your um, blizzard up here on this top bar, because it'll clip both the bottom row, the top row, and the butt side. I like to weave in living bombs every once in a while when I can afford the mana. And then I wait for them to get up here before jumping back down. I jump down, and then I recast Living Blizzard on the top bar. That's this top bar is super nice, as you can see here. Now you want to let them get close. You want to find the high, you want to hide in a high, semi high left. Oh, is it, there's only a couple left. Cool. I'm going to evocate down here. Yep, and Living Flame heals you while you're in your ice block, too. I think this is just the only guy left. Yeah. Okay, so we did screw up the pool, but... Ooh. Nice. My first waylaid supplies. That's it. It's pretty easy once you start getting it down, even though I did die during the attempt. Here's the talents I am using. I am leveling as Deep Frost. Ice block is obviously required. You do not want to play Shatter. You want Arctic Reach as well as the mana from Frost Channeling. Um, now, obviously, you can pull as much as you want to. Obviously, I should have gotten um, more mobs, but I was a bit nervous about pulling it without world buff, so I'm going to have to go get another world buff. Let's kill this guy, though. Let's see if he gives anything cool. Okay. Let's fuck this boy up. He resisted my first one. He doesn't seem to have too much health. As of right now, he's not casting any weird abilities, so you can probably pull this guy first glance with the big pull. And what do we get? Something cool? Oh, wow. Oh! Oh! Look at that, boys! Expanded intellect! Let's go! Let's freaking go, dude! Well, that's a great way to, uh, to learn the video. Is it just a cast? Oh my god, Pat. Yes, let's go. 45 minute AI buffs now and a good helmet. Well, that's a great way to end the video. <laughs> um, I will have a more in-depth guide out soon, guys, for this. This was kind of just a chicken scratch while I'm in the middle of live streaming. I wanted to try and get some form of pool guide out for you guys. Um, the key thing is utilizing this jump over here. You want to jump up into this wall as much as you can. You want to get lucky enough to have the rare spawn spawn so you can get expanded intellect. But for this jump, you want to look into the corner and just jump up. Look into the corner and jump up. Well, that's it for the YouTube video. Remember to pre-clear your phantasms. I'll have a full in-depth guide for this release sometime later. But this, is again, is just a quick video. Thanks for checking it out, guys. And um, if you're watching this right now, I'm live streaming. So come check it out. See you.